So are we blaming the wrong people? Let's ask Republican Congressman Ron Paul, who joins us now from his home, I believe. Good to see you, Congressman. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Devin. So Thank are you. we blaming nice the wrong here. people when we focus all the attention on the bankers? If you do only the bankers and you include all the bankers, yes. Some bankers know exactly what they're doing, and they've been benefiting by the easy money system, and they were, you know, wildly speculating and making a lot of money. But they were also encouraged by the moral hazard of FDIC and too big to fail, and they knew what they were doing. So they were acting in a logical way. But the real culprit that, that I've been talking about for so long has been easy money too long, and that right. is low interest rates, the false signals of uh, a lot of savings out there, and you should be investing. And that, uh, of, of course, isn't looked at. Wasn't so it looked started. At it the started with they the never Fed. Came up with that. It started with the Fed and Alan Greenspan. Yep. Oh, well, even before that, I, I base uh, our modern uh, calamity in, uh, in our uh, financial situation from 1971 when all the restraints were removed from creating currency out of, out, of mid, out of thin air. And that is that that is the reason you have your deficits, because of the lack of, of uh, the tying of our dollar to anything other than paper. So that right, let let me just be specific for the folks gold, out there who might not remember. 71 is when Nixon separated the dollar from gold. Yes, and this introduced an era where Congress could run up deficits for any reason, whether it's for policing the world or for the welfare state, and at the same time accommodating the financial situation, too. The financial organizations knew about this, too, and so the, the Fed had to monetize the, debt, the, the, the deficit. If you don't have a central bank that monetizes the debt, you put a lot of restraints on big government. Anybody that thinks government should be smaller and held in check, they have to believe in sound money because it's with the Federal Reserve System and the ability to create this money and the falling corruption and the malinvestment and the financial bubbles and the bailouts, it's all a consequence. But if you do concentrate on a narrow group of bankers and say they created the whole problem without looking at legislation and with look, without looking at the Federal Reserve and without looking at all the regulations that are a burden as well, then you're really missing the boat. All right, let's, let's talk about some individuals here. Barney Frank and other congressmen and senators who supported Fannie and Freddie getting way in over their head on these subprime loans. That had a lot to do with it as well, didn't it? Oh, yeah, I, and I, th I think this line of credit to, uh, to the Treasury, it was only $2 billion, but I always said that when push comes to shove, the Fed will end up owning these derivatives and these securities. But I had legislation in eight, ten years ago that said remove the line of credit, remove this guarantee that the Fed would always step in because if the Fed had not stepped in, you would have had the dollar crisis which has just been delayed because too many around the world, the Chinese were owning all these and if they literally collapsed, you would have had a bigger calamity but all we have done is delayed the monetary crisis because we have allowed our Federal Reserve to buy up all all these securities, but that was part of the system of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and propping them up and guaranteeing that everybody can get a loan, no down payments, 125% right. is, you, you know, equity, the, the whole mess. It, it, uh, when this history is written, it will be unbelievable of what, what unbelievable. we just well, and, the and, and frankly, years. frankly, Congressman, out and out, what I would call out and out bribes. I mean, when you had... Chris Dodd, who was, who was the head of the banking committee, writing legislation that benefited people that he was getting sweetheart deals from to the tune of $300 billion in that housing bill, uh, I would call that criminal behavior, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, this is fraud in, in, the, uh, in, in the individual sense, and it should be punished, and it should be looked into, and this whole well, story was looked into, Leiter and of course it was whitewashed, Congressman, that was the problem. Yeah, but but also the fraud is in the money. I mean, it's fraudulent to steal from the people by diluting the value of the money. Debasing the currency is the big fraud, which destroys the economy and takes away the jobs and puts the burden of inflation on the little people. The, the one thing that they never talk about is our medical care system is in a crisis because it costs too much. 
Well, it costs too much because there's an inflationary factor in there. That isn't even discussed. So everybody is cheated when you have fraud in the monetary system. But the individual fraud, how people take advantages of this and adds on to it, and then there's corruption involved. Uh, yes, but that to me is probably small, much smaller than the fraud of the monetary system okay. and what we've been living with. Finally, but, we, we got to run, are enjoying... Congressman, but I have to ask you about Tim Geithner because, of course, he's in the news. He's going to have to answer questions. Questions before Congress, uh, do you think he deserves to go based on what we're now finding about it, out about his role in AIG? Yeah, yeah, he deserve he deserves to go. But I warn people that's not going to solve all our problems. They'll replace somebody that believes in the same things that he believes in. The point that I made with the Geithner affair is it makes my point transparency of the Federal Reserve. We should know about all those deals. And if they knew we were going to know about all those deals, they wouldn't be making so money and, and getting into so many problems. Well, we, you know we support you on the transparency issue. We actually support you in court on that. Ron Paul, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, David.